officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia. The man in business casual removes his cufflinks. You shouldn't be seeing him in an intimate setting. For some reason, you feel this man is your superior. Superior, but he's not in the command chain. His hands are clean and well manicured. This is a man who knows the importance of appearances. My name is Charles Vildrouin, and I am an official with the coalition government. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur la Clé. Okay. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. I wonder why he would come, like, come forward with information. Seems like he would not want to be associated with this at all. But then again, this is a different world, right? Like, I'm, I'm kind of like applying values from our world onto this situation. No, first ask an innocuous personal question to get the interview off on the right foot. Okay. Yes. Make it clear you're the one setting the terms here. Point at the bed. Before we go on, I absolutely have to inquire about this wonderful canopy. <laughs> Show the silk robe. Before we get to that, tell me where you got this beautiful silk robe from. Wait, is this supposed... But this isn't... This is the... Is this the smoker's apartment or his apartment? Now I'm confused. Uh, show him the smart... The smoker said that's why he chose this place, right? Show him the Samaritan hat. Uh, we'll get to that right before you tell me the story behind the black Samaritan hat. Get out of business. Hello, Mr. Vildroy. Let's get started. Um, let's inquire about this one. Actually, let's say I didn't pick up that stuff. This would be the only thing to select from, right? So let's go with the hat because this is the thing that you're probably least likely to select before talking to him. Tell me the story about this hat. I got it from the head of the Samaran delegation on my trip to Lomantang. It's made from a special charcoal colored bamboo. It's an emblem of the formal normalization of our diplomatic relations. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is his apartment. And the, uh, the smoking man was visiting him. You clear that up for me guys in the, in, in the comment section. Cause I'm a little bit confused now. That's really all I can tell you about it. He forms a little rooftop with his fingers. Cold air sweeps in from the balcony. That didn't work at all. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. Um. Let's go. Let's let's cut to business. This is what a superstar cop would do. Is just get right to business. You actually witnessed the lynching. I'm sorry to say I did, officer. The man gives a solemn nod. This is just the break we've been looking for. <laughs> Easy, detective. No need to jump to conclusions. <laughs> Such a superstar. He eyes the spectacled man near the window, who smiles and spreads his hands. Is it because you did it? <laughs> Start for the, we're a little. We get a little too excited. Is it because you did it, Mister Vildray? Because I did it. The man scoffs. <laughs> He's clearly not a man accustomed to being spoken to in that manner, let alone to being accused of murder. My apologies, I misspoke. I mean, what did you see? Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. What do you mean, like in a play? Lieutenant is already scribbling down notes. It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. I was on the balcony when it happened, Getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. Everyone pretending like they're not seeing it? That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. Sounds like the victim was unconscious, or at least incapacitated. Interesting. Who were they? Can you describe them? I couldn't see their faces well, and there were quite a few of them. But they were very loud and very... Martinez. He pauses looking for the right wording. Let's just say that the laboring classes can get rather expressive with their profanities. How many of them were there? I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? The lieutenant sends you a sharp look at the mention of that number. <laughs> were any of them the giant of Coconur? Hmm. 
No, there were no mythological giants, I'm afraid. They were all quite human, so far as I could tell. Did any of them look like drummers? Drummers? Why, no. But then, I don't know what a drummer is supposed to look like. Yeah, I don't know either. I thought you might be able to tell me. I think we can drop the drummer angle. That was my bad. Damn right, Kim. You know that I'll jump on to stuff like that, Kim. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta calm yourself with that stuff. What happened next? I went back inside. Were you able to see anything from inside? Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see, but I could still hear their voices. They were threatening to kill that poor man. Uh, were they men, women? All men, I presume. But again. I couldn't see very clearly. What ethnicity were they? I believe they were mostly white, though I believe I saw two Aeropagites among them. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a mask accent. What happened next? Well, that's the strangest part, officer. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. What do you mean nothing happened? They lynched a guy. Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts. No anything. Why didn't you call the RCM? You're right, of course. That is what one is supposed to do in such circumstances. I was simply in shock. The man wipes the glass. I was thinking maybe it was him that did call, right? I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what time was all this happening, approximately? I feel like we didn't really learn anything new here. All I can say is that it was late. So let me get this straight. You didn't actually witness the hanging itself, did you? No, I didn't see the corpse until the following day. It seems this wasn't the break you were hoping for. Fuck. I just noticed, is that like a, is that a Pokeball? Is Kim into Pokemon? I think we have everything we need. Thank you for talking to us, Mr. Villedroin. Of course. Anything I can do to assist the RCF. Maybe he's trying to get out in front of it. Maybe that's why he wanted to talk to us. Like, saying that he didn't really know that much. Uh, what's an official like you doing in Martinez? The coalition is only looking out for the price stability. Inflation is a killer. Like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. The economy impacts the entire international community, which is why it requires international oversight. Okay, but what are you doing here in this apartment? Ah, uh, well, I'm renovating it. Okay. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the coalition forces landed here. Mm, do we buy that? I don't know. Well, actually, there's like paint and stuff around, huh? You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived here. Um, so you're some kind of bureaucrat. Yes, as I said before, I am a commissioner from sur la clé working for the Institute of Price Stability. This is one of the main projects of the Moral Inter. What is this international community? <laughs> la Communauté Internationale is what Revacholians colloquially call the coalition. In other words, the nations that stopped the disaster of the revolution. And what do I call the coalition? Your employer, technically speaking. The governing authority of Rivachol. The RCM is but one part of this provisional administration. What is the price stability? It is the most important thing. Ah, that clears everything up. <laughs> it's the central goal of any sound <laughs> monetary policy. Maintaining the price stability is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity, which is essential for maintaining high levels of employment, which is essential for maintaining the social stability. Basically, it makes sure the price of bread doesn't change. Precisément. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. Too much deflation, it becomes too cheap for bakers to produce. That's why the Institute of Price Stability works to keep inflation just below 2%. Uh, below 2% of what? But not too far below, no. Too below is also bad. Below, but close to 2%. You're not answering my questions at all. 
The coalition believes in the importance of informing the public about the benefits of the price stability. Like it's a politician. Transparency a is one of our principles. Would you like an informational pamphlet? Yeah, sure. Give me a leaflet. A sound monetary policy is essential for addressing uncertainty. Stability is the raison d'être of the moral inter. It's the reason why I identify as a moralist. But oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. That's too bad. You can always call our information line. Making information available is part of the moral intern's commitment to transparency. I've heard about this moral intern before, but I want to know more. It's the International Organization for Moralists. Hence, Moralist International. The Institute of Price Stability is just one of its many mind babies, as is the coalition. Turn to Kim. So what I'm hearing is that we're moral intern bitches? Oh, turn to Kim. So we're actually working for the moral intern? It doesn't seem so bad. There are more nefarious powers to work for than the moral intern. Turn back to Sunday friend. Are you a moralist? But of course. Am I a moralist? Well, do you value freedom? Do you believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values? Lieutenant, are you a moralist? Hmm? Me? I, uh... You've managed to catch the lieutenant off guard, but only for a moment. He quickly recomposes himself. I'm a lieutenant of the RCM, dedicated to maintaining law and order in Ravashot. He's not a moralist. A very moralist answer. The and lieutenant not. is practiced in the art of putting on a show for one's superiors. Martinez doesn't seem very normal or stable to me. Martinez? No. Martinez is something else. What about the rest of Revachol? Is it part of the normal world? Revachol is generally difficult. It's led by an interim government, which means it hasn't yet achieved full democracy. But they are working towards it. You're all doing very well here, relatively speaking. Gives you an approving nod. I don't think I'm a moralist. Moralism sounds incredibly boring. I want more action. Moralism is the ideology of foreign occupiers. Revachal must be governed by Revachalians. Democracy is a meaningless sham as long as the working class is under the boot heel of capital. It's like every time I'm talking to people, I'm choosing option D, none of the above. Is that moralism? <laughs> I don't think I'm a moralist. Moralism sounds incredibly boring. I want more action. Do you think peace is boring? What about prosperity? Mm. I kind of like prosperity. Peace? Yeah, that shit sounds like a snooze fest. My friend, that is only because you have never known the alternative. And I pray you never do. Now, enough of this delightful political interview. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Tell me about Sur la Clef. What's there to say? Sur la Clef is a modern, Sur la Clef. urbanized country that measures very high on the human development and freedom index. Mostly, though, it's known as the executive heart of EPIS. Okay. Moreover, it is a great sponsor of less emerged countries. Revachal is only one of its many darlings whose progress it supports and cherishes. That's nice of them. Oh, yes. Sur la Clé is mega benevolent to its darlings. Mega benevolent? Enough business, let's talk about something else. Whatever you wish, officer. Can you tell me about your friend? Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. What's Kedra? Kedra is a candidate member of APIS. But between you and me, their potential membership is a more contentious issue. What do you mean? That it's never going to happen. Oh. They enter negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. What's this EPIS thing you keep talking about? EPIS is a very special program developed by the Moral Intern to support certain Occidental nations. It began as a unified system of weights and measures, which proved to be a wild success. Nothing but kilograms and centimeters as far as the eye can see. 
It was such a wild success that we expanded it into an economic union for the processing of steel. Another success. And between you and me, the moral in turn feels emboldened by this success. Emboldened to take EPIS to the next level. Uh, okay, but like, what does it stand for? Why? It stands for progress and stability, like the moral intern as a whole. No, 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 no. What do the letters stand for? It's been such a wild, extraordinary success thus far. We are very <laughs> excited to take it to the next level. You don't even hear the words I'm saying, do you? A supranational political alliance. The United States of Occident. Is it going to be like this place here? You mean Revachol? No. It's going to have transparent democracy. I thought... He already told us that it was part of it. Is Rebuchel going to be part of EPIS? It's one day going to be a candidate member. Oh, okay. EPIS, I thought it was. Didn't you say that candidate members never become real members? No, no. Candidate members do become members. Why do we even have the whole system in place if they don't? It just takes time. Time and evaluation. But we were talking about my friend here, not politics. He chuckles gently. How did you two even become friends? How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the insulin Isola? Oil platforms ablaze in the night. Civil wars lasting for years. Finally, the international community is forced to step in. What are you talking about? No one becomes friends that way. <laughs> Au contraire. It's how millions of people end up where they are. Meeting the people they meet. It's how I came here. And my friend, too. Uh, what are you doing in his apartment by yourself? Okay, so it is his apartment. Okay, you guys just don't have to answer this. Someone told me who he is. Sorry, who? The man throws a quick glance at his watch. Your friend, the smoker on the balcony. We were just talking about him. But I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. Fine. It is a cornerstone oh. of our civilization. Fine, but what's his real name? Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. I think I'm. I think I'm going. I'm. I'm coming full circle around to uh, my original uh, idea, and that's why Kim was laughing at us. I guess. So all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study the arts. He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts. Yes. As though you weren't envious enough of the boy as is. Which arts? He's a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. Fuck, I do like that guy. Perhaps graphic design, printmaking, who knows? The world is open wide for a talented youth like him. Used to be like us. What are you doing in his apartment by yourself? I'm just enjoying the view. The man smiles, nodding to the window. Uh, What view? It's dark outside. Listen. He says, raising his hand. The baby is crying in the neighboring apartments. What's baby is crying? No, listen. He says again, looking outside. The Insulindian Bay. What about it? This place used to be a luxury accommodation before the revolution. Apartments, of course, were much bigger then. A few walls have been added here and there, leaving some of the tenants without a private bathroom or a kitchen. But the million real view stays. You can't take that away. He knocks on the balcony door, his face mirrored in the darkened glass. I was asking about your friend. My friend comes and goes. I'm sure you'll see him around. He's a busy bee. I had something else in mind. I'm all ears, officer. Thanks, I've got all I need. A moment, officer. Do you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. Uh, hold on. Why can't we talk later? I'm not going anywhere. I just want to take a look in this apartment. I guess we already looked around. We don't have to do that. Why, why can't we talk later? It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in my position to be discussing murders with local militiamen. And I'm pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. Um, okay, thanks for the heads up. Uh, let me just look around first. Sure. Go ahead. It's a beautiful space. Let me know if you have any further questions. 
I mean, I think I got everything, but... Oh yeah, we got that pen. Wait, how much cash do I have now? Oh, I have enough cash. I think I got everything. Okay, so do we just leave? Oh, <laughs> I thought the door was there. Well, unfortunately, that wasn't quite as exciting as I thought it would be. Um... So what, what, what exactly do we need to do next? Who put the clothes in the trash? We need to talk to Kuno, I guess, and Gout. Um, signatures, that's going to be tomorrow. Armored gloves. Tomorrow. So looking for that. We have to wait for the lieutenant to go to bed. Authority. Shit. Tomorrow. Still haven't found speed. We can pay gout. I guess what we'll do is we'll go talk to Kuno. And then gout. By the clothes. Where did the exit go again? Okay, it goes it goes at the back. I should have gone in there probably. Uh is Kuno S there? Try to sneak up on me. She just won't have any of it. See a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Did I ever click on this? What the fuck am I doing? The worst goddamn cop. Why am I looking at this? Cop habit. You look at everything. This isn't case related. You think? What kind of vehicle drove through here? Hard to say. Okay, I think I've got some visual calculus stuff, so let's do it. Plus one. I think it's just the one thing. If I don't remember correctly. Okay. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. The tire tracks were left here by nice. an unknown event that took place some days ago. It's a message written in the language of burnt rubber. So they broke through the gate, reversed and turned back away. We thought that one of the killers could have been one of the drivers, right? Some of that rubber stuck to the tiles right in front of the whirling in rags. This is point A. The driver started there and then accelerated straight into the fence, left a hole big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry, according to the cafeteria manager. Why that pang of guilt again? The hole in this fence doesn't look that huge. Oh, damn bartender. He was exaggerating. People blame cops for everything that goes wrong in the world. This has nothing to do with you. Okay, okay, what happened next? The driver proceeded to back out of the yard, barely stopping before hitting the adjacent building. 
before heading south. Must have been in a hurry. Hmm. A car drove. Uh, a car drove through the fence. You are correct. This is a rather motor carriage friendly city. Somehow that makes you feel scared. You don't know why. Is this connected to the case? I'm not sure. There are plenty of traffic accidents waiting to happen in Martinez. With the jam right here on the roundabout. I would keep them separate. But, hmm. This would have been the way that they brought the body in here, right? You could follow the track south. There seems to be a canal there. See where they went. If you find the time. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll do that later. Let's let's stick with talking to Kuno. My glasses on. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. Does Kuno ever sleep? <laughs> Fuck, does Kuno care? Okay. More questions about the crime scene. Yeah, the kingdom of Kuno. The fuck do you want with it? Okay, so I think I talked to Kuno before, and there wasn't an option to talk to him about the clothes, but because it like, or sorry, there was an option, but it was like grayed out. So I thought that there wasn't anything new. But it's just graying it out because I I I had selected that before, not because there's nothing new to talk to him about. The dead man's clothes are in the trash container. Point to the container. How did they get there? Yeah, Kuno doesn't know shit about that. That shit is beneath Kuno. I need to know. It could be a lead in the investigation. Someone may have tampered with the murder scene. Listen, listen. Kuno doesn't care about this small time shit. Just listen. Kuno saw what you did there, dumpster diving. Sad shit. I got, what do you mean? I got this ledger. Kuno could hook you up with some sweet rags. Shit like Kuno's wearing. Your size, good price, 500 real. You'd have to be blind not to notice the giant white letters F A L N running down his trouser leg. Says uh, here are options. Wait, I asked you what happened to his clothes. You must have seen them lying around. All right, entertain me. What's so great about these pants? No, Kuno, you don't know anything about the tampering I'm investigating, and I already have pants. Uh, yeah, we're, uh, you must have seen them lying around. Look, Kuno ain't seen shit lying around. Except for that f you took away. Now you want performance gear or not, Grandpa? The lieutenant remains <laughs> silent, but his expression couldn't say, I told you so, any louder. All right, entertain me. What's so great about these pants? Pig, these are foul modulars. Liquid fit, performance crotch, urban survival shit. Made in Mirova by scientists. Pants scientists. Believe it, you need this shit. He unzips his jacket. Okay, it's his jacket that he's unzipping. To give you a quick peek at the plastic wrapped pants. They are graphite black and look brand new. These could drastically improve your chances of survival in the urban wilderness. They will also make you into an idiot. Hmm. I might be interested in the pants. Let's talk about this later. All right, Piggo. Shit's rolling. Don't do business with the pig, Kuno. He's going to steal all your money, Kuno. As you can see, Kuno and C don't trust you. Can't do business without trust. There's more to his distrust than being a pig. He feels threatened by something obscure in you. What that is, however, remains a puzzle for now. Man, is Kuno? I can, just can't seem to get through to Kuno, no matter how hard I try. Um, there's also a mug in the trash. Show him the mug. The fuck? A mug in the trash? Is this about the fucking clothes again? Yes. Does this racist mug have anything to do with it? Yes. Does this adequate depiction... Well, does this quaint better not taken out of... <laughs> it's a historic context mug have anything to do with it? Does this racist mug have anything to do with it? Yeah. Kuno sees where this is going. Kuno's got that fast brain. You saying you picked it after the mug fucker because he's the clothes fucker? I can't hear you, Kuno. Speak louder, Kuno. That's exactly what I'm saying, Kuno. Someone has tampered with the crime scene. Clean some of it up. Shit, that's tense. Someone's going to the beat down basement, huh? 
more guy gonna get tied to the radiator. He nods in approval. Okay, maybe we're getting through to him. Kuno doesn't know who put that shit in there. And if he did, he wouldn't squeal. But if you find out, maybe you can... Stop turning into a pig, Kuno! They're trying to get you hooked on the snitching! Get away from my Kuno f He wants to be a cop. He wants to be like us. She looks at a hiss even meaner than before. Yeah, get your bacon shit away. Kuno doesn't like to be seen with the popo. Get your shit done and out of Kuno's face. All right, let's talk about something else. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. We're so close. So close. Kuno doesn't fuck. Kuno doesn't care, guys. Okay, what other important stuff have I missed over here? <laughs> Although, I guess this wasn't really all that important. Or maybe it will end up being important. Or maybe not. Or maybe it will. We'll see.